I'm Gio Perez. I'm the host of Like Waters MA Talk, and I'm here with Stephen Reich. He's the host of uh, Martial Art Media Review. And we're here today to talk about an interview we watched on Facebook. And it was an interview with Benny the Jet and Alda Costco. And they were, uh, they were pretty much talking about their history within martial arts. But they focused a lot on how Bushido is being lost within martial arts. So being diluted because of all, uh, all the things that are happening within martial arts now. Uh, what did you think about that uh, interview? I yeah. liked it a lot. I mean, first of all, coming from two accomplished, well-seasoned champ, you know, I mean, Benny the Jet, he's a living legend, you know, right. you have, you know, Al DeCosco, you know, super renowned martial artist, right. and they've been there for, you know, they have lots of years of history, and right. have lived through many eras of martial They have been very arts. active martial arts, pretty yes, much. Yeah. Yes, so to hear them just, you know, especially Benny Urquidez and how he went through each era, and kind of pointed out, you know, in the 70s, this was happening. They went right. to the 80s and how this was happening. Right. And how Al DeCosco's, you know, complemented that with uh, where Bushido was going and how it was getting lost yeah. uh, through those eras. Um, yeah, I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, I, I think, agree. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's true. I mean, before you couldn't find a, and they pointed this out, you couldn't find a martial arts school in every corner. You would have to, you know, uh, in the you know 60s yeah, and 70s. you would have to look for somebody that was teaching. So those martial artists, you know, wouldn't just uh, go and teach you techniques or hold the pads for you or or have you in a, in a in a workout routine. You know, nowadays you walk into a gym, you know exactly what you're going to do. Uh, you know, they're yelling in your ear to do better, get a, get a workout, get your punching done, get your kicking done and you're out of there. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? That, it's like that's the routine now. But before, no, you know, you would walk in, uh, you know, and they would start disciplining you from the beginning. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, just watching, I mean, when I started practicing martial arts with my teacher, I mean, uh, no yawning. Uh, if he sees you sleepy, you know, you do push-ups. Yeah. If he, all these things. I had know, a type of no teacher things. that had yeah. a, a student creed we had yeah. to memorize. If so. you're if you're bending <laughs> over too much, hey, you know, stand up straight. You know, if you're standing wrong, hey, man, stand straight. You know, all these little things that you go through a through a martial art. Yeah. You know, through that traditional they martial pound, arts, yeah. reinforce those. Uh, they, uh, you know, I promise to be a better person. Right. I promise to be. You know, yeah. all these things making a creed, you a, a better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had the we had a to say it. Yeah. A mission you know? statement. A lot yeah. of schools are doing that. Character. Uh, I mean, it does build character development. They talked about that. He said that it's you know they used to help you develop your character, better person, better you know human being, better you know family man, you know spiritually too. I mean, because martial arts, I mean, it's like a religion, you know, yeah, to yeah. some of these martial artists, you know, it's like a religion, you know, to me, it's, uh, you know, these, you know, as martial artists, we, we practice this religiously, right. you know, we get up in the morning and we're thinking about techniques, you know, sometimes you're in the market, I, you know, I'm, ki I'm, you know, I think and now they took the bar off the, of the shopping cart, but before I used to be, <laughs> you know, developing my chins, you know, on the. I, on, the, on the shopping cart, but now they took it off. I think they probably took it off because of me. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not there anymore. But you know what? But martial artists try to do all these things. I mean, I remember my teacher talking about, you know, practicing his uh, joint lock techniques during work. You know, he's he, he's walking around his, his hallways, you know, in the hospital and, and practicing, practicing, practicing techniques. And that creates, I mean, you are practicing for perfection and religiously you're doing it right and that, that that deeper connection with the martial arts oh you know martial artists bond on that right and uh now i think people are bonding a little more on you know the tough guy thing you know it's a little they're not bonding on the spiritual not no. done on the bushido they're, no, they're, they're bonding not. on uh you know they're sizing each other up kind of no <laughs> they know? are i mean and it happens and, uh, i mean it happens everywhere it happens you know if you're practicing martial arts and somebody who doesn't practice, I mean, they're they're already sizing you up. You know, they're, they're, there's all these little things that happen, you know, because they're not living within that code anymore. Right. You know, even uh, guys that practice martial arts now, I mean, they 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 feel they're so tough. They go out there and, you know, they'll, they go to a bar or they'll go to a party and then, you know, 
they're they're not i mean they're willing to just go ahead and and put those techniques to work right right <laughs> <laughs> i mean the other thing they talked about was uh the development you said they, they talked about the 60s the 70s the 80s and 90s within that martial arts i mean and they talked about a division between uh, martial artists and kickboxers because that that the right. sport started to develop more competitive you yeah get, very less competitive. traditional yeah you know and uh yeah i mean that was a reason i switched to hapkido yeah. from Taekwondo. I mean, I was at a World Taekwondo Federation Taekwondo school, a very accomplished one with medals all over the wall and uh, nationals champions. They were all our instructors. Yeah. But the more involved in the school I got, the more I, 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 I was more into practical and I wanted to go deeper. And it was very, they got more into the competition. Every time I asked, like, why don't we learn throws or why do we learn takedowns and more practical things? And they would say, well, it's not legal in tournaments, so we don't really focus do on that. We right. really just do the tournament thing. And so I got frustrated and researched other martial arts and learned about the, the arts dealing with key energy. Right. Aikido, Aikido. Right. Uh, and that always went deeper because the energy aspect kind of makes it deeper. Because they also, <laughs> they also you know, stayed teaching the traditional way. You know, and they were they were not right. getting into sport yet. You know, they're, they're, they kept it pure. I would say, you know, even in Japan. I mean, I know in Japan right now, you go to some dojos that have been there for you know at least a couple hundred years, and they keep practicing the same way. They don't change anything. Yeah, you're right. Have you noticed that? And uh, also, I mean, he talked about. I mean, sports. Let's go talk about our sports again. I think the rivalry was because. Uh, the kickboxers, I mean, they were, I mean, these martial artists that were going into, I mean, the martial artists that were going to kickboxes would, would I mean, some of the best kickboxers uh, were from traditional martial arts yeah. before. I mean, he even said that. He, he pointed this out. Yeah. Why? The because, best ones had that in yeah, common. Yeah, because they had that that character, that that uh, spiritual, you know, growth. You know, they, they I think I think there's something happens internally that they're, they're building it. It's not just externally. And th this is what they were dealing with, that the new generation is just dealing on external, not internal. Well, I think the fight between the traditional martial artists and the kickboxers during that time, I think it was mo mostly because their mentality was more based on the kickboxing and that they were great at doing that yeah, thing. Yeah. But, but then you become a stylist. You know, you become good at that art. I mean, if you're a kung fu guy, and all you do is practice kung fu and you know, or a certain style of Kung Fu, that, that's all you're good at. You know, I think uh, Bushido code, uh, you know, I mean, you have to look at it as a war mentality. This is war. So if I'm going to, you know, fight somebody, if I'm going to attack or, or yeah. be able to defend, I have to be uh, good all around. You know, so I could be Isn't able that to the martial and martial yeah, arts. Yeah, that's the yeah. martial and the martial arts. So, <laughs> so you have to be. So you would see this martial artist, a kickboxer, be like, hey, man. Yeah, man, we're better than this and that. I mean, you know, a martial artist probably would say, you know what, forget, I don't need to go to the ring. Let's go outside. Yeah. And I would do the same thing. I'd be like, you know, really? I mean, I saw some, 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 some other videos there. They're trying to, you know, show martial arts in the ring. And I mean, you're still living with rules. I mean, martial arts in reality, there, there's no rules. Right. You know, you go on the street, you know, hey, you know. There's only one no, round. There's, a, there's, you know, one, one guy's going to stay standing, one guy's going to be down. That's it. Right, yeah. Somebody <laughs> asked me, like, you ever go, you know, sizing me up, one of those yeah. guys. Didn't get the whole Bushido part of yeah. his training. And he was like, you know, so, uh, you know, you ever go 10 rounds with somebody? You know, and I'm just like, no. No. Never went 10. <laughs> you know, and that's just because we were trained about around the one round that's when, at the end, one's like standing and one's not. Yeah, I mean, it. it's... I mean, it is an accomplishment in itself going 12 rounds. I mean, you see these guys practicing kickboxing. I mean, I mean, this is no disrespect to, right. to kickboxers or people that practice a certain style. But we're talking right. about but do pretty much what I'm talking about is that interview. And that yeah. interview was talking about uh, their time and the Bushido. Right. Do I, but I think, agree. Yeah. The, do it, but do it the Bushido yeah, way. Yeah, do it the Bushido you way. Know. You, you know who, li who lived by that Bushido code and that I, I respect is this guy that he passed away really young. His name is Andy Hug. Uh, did you ever see this guy? Yeah, no. I know he was a, a, he used to practice, uh, 
a Kyokushin Kyokushin Kai. He used to practice yeah, that. The muscle and, yeah, and he, I mean, he got knocked out a couple times. He would get up, fight again. He got knocked out, get up again. I mean, but he really lived that code, you I know. Yeah, yeah, get up again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but that guy was good. I mean, I'm talking about Bushido wise and the way that you know his ethics, everything. I mean, that guy. You got to look him up if you don't know who Andy Hug is. You know, t- take a look at that guy. Okay, I think he was uh, he was from Switzerland. Yeah, he was a, oh, wow. fight, a champion, a K1 champion for you know a few years and yeah, yeah. fought a lot. Well, anyway, uh, they also talked about the '90s when the early '90s uh, came up. Uh, now, with now, the UFC. Yeah, now it's it wasn't a kickboxing versus uh, uh, martial artists. Now it's all these stand-up guys versus these uh, ground fighters. Yeah, they all blend together. Oh now. yeah, I mean, no, especially with the Gracies. You know, they would show up to schools and be like, "Hey, man, we're gonna challenge. We're gonna beat you guys." You but know, back like, when it first, like the old Japanese movies, like like the, nobody like was had Gra- Hoist Gracie was. He, nobody was at his level. These guys would actually go to dojos and 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 challenge, you know, guys to hey, you know what? Oh, in my the nineties. Oh thing? yeah, my art is better than yours, you know, type of deal. Oh. And then, I mean, of course, it Just would show win. up. And Why? Because size everybody. Up. Yeah, the guys, the guys didn't know any ground fighting, but now, now a lot of people are more, you know, aware of the ground techniques, so they're able to defend. You know, again, yeah. are you a well? Uh, rounded martial art ask that question for yourself if you're watching this show and you, all you do is practice one art and you think you're the best at that art that makes you a stylist my friend that doesn't make you a martial artist but a martial artist you're well-rounded you want to be good if you want to become a martial artist you want to be good at everything you want to be able to know at least how to be able to defend yourself yeah, you want to be ready this, yeah you want to be ready okay there is a book that you know you guys could uh, read and it's called the uh, Code of the Samurai. Uh, I've, I mean, I haven't fully finished reading this book, but it tells you a lot of a lot of things about Bushido. Who's the author? The author is Thomas uh, Clieri, and illustrated by Oscar Ratty. So it's called Code of the Samurai, and it says a modern translation of the Bushido uh, Shoshin Shu of Taira Shigesuki. <laughs> okay. forgive us for yeah, the pronunciation for the, yeah. <laughs> anyway, a powerful contemporary translation of its classic uh, you know way of the warrior pretty much so you know look look for this book it's, it's pretty nice this is a nice little read thank you for watching guys uh, I hope you enjoy this show um, let us know what you think about this show and other shows that we've had let us know if you think that Bushido is still alive or is it just a myth or if it's just vanishing away uh don't forget to comment again if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe or tell of the other martial art friends to subscribe to the channel uh you could find me at uh la martial art at gmail.com and also llama talk on facebook you'll find some shows there and where can they find you steve uh you can find me at like water productions on facebook twitter and youtube thank you for watching guys hope you have a great day and keep on kicking